Hello everyone! Today we're once again going to look at some more easy and free CNC projects. Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure to do so and hit that notification bell. Alright, let's jump right in. The projects in this video have all been created in Carbine Create, so you'll need to download and have this software installed before you can open these projects. Carbine Create is a free program made by Carbine 3D. I'll have a link to download the program in the description box below. I'll also once again be getting my files from CutRocket.com. CutRocket has a bunch of free CNC files that can be opened in Carbine Create or in Fusion 360. A link to all the files in this video will be in the description box below. I'll also have a download link to my modified version of the files that I used for my projects. The first project we're going to look at is this cool Telecaster guitar shaped tray. You can use the link below to head on over to Cut the Rocket and download the file, or alternatively, you can download my version of the file. Once you've downloaded your file, go ahead and open it up in Carbine Create. The first thing you'll want to do is head on over to your job setup settings and change these to fit the material you're using and your model of machine. Next, head on over to the toolpath area and you'll see there's two toolpaths for this project. The first toolpath is for the pocket of the tray and the second toolpath is to cut your project out with tabs that you'll have to cut out after. You'll of course have to change the feeds and speeds and material depth in these toolpaths to adjust for the material you're using. If you're unsure of your feed and speeds, just use the default ones that are provided by Carbide Create. Once you have that all set up, go ahead and simulate your project and make sure everything looks okay. For my project, I'll be using this 3 quarter inch white wood I got from one of the big box stores. I'll also be using this nice 1 inch thick cherry wood. The bit I'll be using for this project is a quarter inch dual flute down cut bit that's made by Freud. Alright, now that I have my projects all set up, I'm going to go ahead and run them. Once these are done cutting, I'm going to go ahead and use a detail sander with 220 grit sandpaper to sand down my projects. I'll also be using this little finger sander and a sanding sponge with 220 grit to get any areas I can't get into with the bigger detail sander. Now that the sanding's complete, I'm going to go ahead and take some of the trays that I cut out of the white wood and I'm going to stain them with some salmon water-based stain. I'll be using a sponge to apply the stain and then quickly wiping it off with a clean rag. Once I've done applying the stain, I'm going to set these guitar trays down onto my pegboard until dry. To finish these trays off, I'll be using this Osmo 3043. This is a hardening oil that's typically used on floors or furniture, and I found that it really does a good job at popping the grain. To apply the Osmo, I'll be simply wiping it on with a rag and wiping off any excess with a rag. I'll be applying two coats of the Osmo, letting the first coat dry overnight before applying the second coat. Once the two coats of Osmo are all dry, I'll be back to show you what these finished projects look like. So here we got the finished trays. The Osmo Poly Oil did a great job of bringing this grain alive, especially in the cherry wood. Next up, we're going to be doing this fun Lego Man tray. Again, the links to download this file will be in the description box below. Once you've downloaded the file, go into the setup and change the settings to whatever material you'll be using. You can then go into the toolpaths and you'll see that there's three toolpaths for this project. The first path will be the pocket cut for the inside of the tray. The second path will be for these little holes by the arm. These holes are optional so you can just go ahead and disable them if you don't see a use for them. And the last toolpath will be to cut out the profile of the tray. You'll of course want to go and change all the feeds and speeds for these toolpaths to fit your needs and your material. If you're unsure of the feeds and speeds to use, just go ahead and use the defaults in the program. Once you have that all set up, go ahead and simulate your project and make sure everything's set up the way you like it. For these Lego trays, I'll once again be using this 3 quarter inch thick white wood board 
And I'll also be using this inch thick wormy maple. To cut my project out, I'll be using this dual flute down cut end mill that's made by Freud. Now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and cut these projects out. Now that I have my projects all cut out, I'm going to once again go ahead and use my detail sander with 220 grit to sand down my project. Any area I can't get into with the detail sander, I'll be using this little finger sander with 220 grit along with a 220 grit sanding sponge. To finish these trays off, I'll once again be using the Osmo Poly Oil. I'll be doing two coats of the Osmo, letting the first one dry overnight before applying the second. Once the Osmo is fully dried, I'll be back to show you what these trays look like. So here's the finished trays with the Osmo oil dry. The Osmo poly oil did a great job of bringing out the figure in this maple, as you can kind of see here. The last project we're going to do today is this MDF maze board. As always, the link to download this maze board will be in the description box below. Once you got your file all opened up in Carbine Create, make sure to go into the job setup and change the settings to the material that you'll be using. Going over to the toolpath tab, you'll see that there's four toolpaths. The first toolpath will be to cut a pocket for the clear acrylic sheet to sit on top of the maze. The next toolpath will be to cut out the maze itself. The third toolpath will cut out your handle and the fourth toolpath will cut out the outside of your project. As always, you're going to want to check the feeds and speeds and material depth in these toolpaths and set them up for whatever material you're going to be using. If you're unsure of your feeds and speeds, just use the defaults provided for the material you're using. Once you have that all set up, go ahead and simulate your project and make sure everything looks good. In the files I've provided, there will also be a file for cutting out your acrylic sheet. For materials, I'll be using this 3 quarter inch thick MDF this 2 millimeter thick clear acrylic sheet. I'll also be using this quarter inch ball bearing and some of these wide head Phillips screws to secure the acrylic sheet onto the MDF. To cut out the maze portion of our maze board, I'll be using this 1 8 down cut bit. And to cut out the handle and the outline of the maze board, I'll be using this quarter inch down cut bit. After my maze board is all cut out, I'll be using my detail sander with 220 grit to sand the edges. I'll also be using the sanding stick with 220 grit and a sanding sponge of 220 grit to sand the maze portion of this maze board. Once everything's sanded down, I'm going to finish this maze off with some polyurethane. I'll be applying the polyurethane using these sponges. I'll also possibly be needing a brush to get into the tighter areas of the maze. I'll be applying two coats of the polyurethane, letting the first coat dry overnight before applying the second one. Once the poly finish is all dry, I'm going to go ahead and attach the acrylic sheet to the maze board. Making sure you've placed the ball inside your maze already, go ahead and do a dry fit of the acrylic onto the maze board to make sure everything fits. If you're happy with the way everything fits, you can go ahead and peel off the protective film on both sides of the acrylic sheet and insert it into the maze board. You'll then want to use a center punch and mark out where you want your mounting screws to go. Then go ahead and drill some pilot holes for your mounting screws. Once your pilot holes have all been drilled and you've cleaned up the sawdust that's resulted from the drill, go ahead and install your screws. So 
So, just like that, you got yourself a functioning maze board game. I myself will be making a few more of these to give away as gifts. So there you have it folks, three more easy and fun CNC projects you can download for free. As always, if you've liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments section below and I'll try to answer them for you. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please make sure to do so and hit that notification bell, which will let you stay updated on all my latest releases. See you all next time.